Hey, so recently we were sharing some apparent myth busters put out by the SSA. Um, and the first part they put out had to do with statements made that apparently were mythical um, as to what the Social Security Retirement Program included or consisted of back in the 1930s when it originated and thereafter under President Roosevelt. So we went through those, there were like five things. This time they're doing something which comes, um, <laughs> they say it's myths and misstatements of fact, frequently circulating on the internet, in email and on websites in endless loops of misinformation. Um, so I thought I'd go through it. Looks like there's four questions and they give you like the common form that it's seen in internet posts or whatever. So the first one, and it all has to do, you know, everything's so political these days. So it all has to do with which political party did X, Y, or Z. Okay. So the question was number one, which political party took social security from the independent trust fund and put it into the general fund so that Congress could spend it. Now, obviously <laughs> these questions are, um, Asserting facts, not in, in evidence, but we'll get to that. Um, so the answer to that one from the SSA's mouth here, and I'll, I will put a button up so you can read this for yourself. With regard to this question was, there has never been any change in the way the Social Security program is financed or the way that Social Security payroll taxes are used by the federal government. Good to know. I do hear that one all the time. <laughs> They're stealing from it. They're borrowing from it. The Social Security Trust Fund was created in 1939. I think that we mentioned that in the last video as part of the amendments that were enacted that year. From its inception, the trust fund has always worked the same way and it has never been put into the general fund of the government. Most likely, the SSA tells us, this question comes from a confusion between the financing of the Social Security program and the way the Social Security Trust Fund is treated in federal budget accounting. And I believe they include here what we spoke about in the last video, um, which is to say that during the Johnson administration of 1968 and starting in 1969, the transactions in the trust fund were included in what is known as the unified budget. So it was all like an accounting procedure. This means that every function of the federal government is included in a single budget. Uh, this is sometimes described by saying that the Social Security Trust Funds are on budget. Um, this budget treatment of the Social Security Trust Fund continued until 1990 when the trust funds were again taken off budget, which means only that they are shown as a separate account in the federal budget. But whether the trust funds are on budget or off budget, according to the SSA, is primarily a question of accounting practices. It has no effect on the actual operations of the trust fund itself. So I'm just sharing with you what it's what they're saying. I'm not really taking an opinion one way or another. The second question was, which political party eliminated the income tax deduction for Social Security FICA withholding? Um, answer number two, there was never any provision of law making the Social Security taxes paid by employees deductible for income tax purposes. So I guess for those of us that weren't around back then, we wouldn't know that unless we read, right? In fact, the 1935 law expressly forbid this idea of being able to deduct it. Okay. Um, which political party started taxing social security annuities? The SSA says the tax taxation of social security began in 1984 following the passage of a set of amendments in 1983, which were signed into law by President Reagan in 1983 and passed by Congress in 1983 on an overwhelmingly bipartisan basis. Vote. The basic rule, they said, was put in place that up to 50% of Social Security benefits could be added to taxable income if the taxpayer's total income exceeded a certain threshold. We see that today when we look at combined income, when people want to know, well, how much of my Social Security would or could be taxed? And this is at this time under Reagan, only 50% of it could ever be taxed. 
um, when they made that new amendment in 1983. 50% and the other 50% would never be taxed. That was since changed under, let's see. No, it got changed. What does it say? Oh, yeah. In 1993, under President Clinton, um, the tax taxable amount was increased to 85% from the 50%. Um, but you got to remember, and I'm just throwing this in there, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. So that's why I'm only going to throw it in kind of broadly. Most people, well, certainly people that don't have a lot of a lot of any other income other than social security. So those people, the people that are on the fixed income of social security when they retire or are on disability, their, their combined income, if it's social security, generally never hits the mark. So none of theirs gets taxed. Because remember, there's still, there's still a big, huge section where not even the 50% is taxed. It is when you start getting the upper income levels, people that have, you know, maybe a huge pension attached or um, a lot of investment income that they're able to draw from and do in retirement. When their income starts getting higher, that's when, okay, some of it is going to be taxed. Um, some of it, some of the social security will be taxed. Um, remember only up to say 50%. Then if they're in a much higher tax arena under combined income, then up to 85% can be. So, so at that point is when 15% is never touched and others zero to 85% might be taxable. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so one president brought in the beginning of it and another president brought it up higher to the 85%. And they do go on to say that um, Beneficiaries of modest incomes might still be subject to the 50% rate or to no taxation at all, depending on their overall, tax, overall taxable income. And that is that combined income term. Um, I don't know if we have a video on that, but if you if you go to the SSA site and you look up combined income or Google SSA combined income, you'll see, it gives you a little definition there of how you can figure out what your combined income is. And, and the rule that will be applied will depend on whether you're married or single. Uh, which political party, this is question number five, decided to start giving annuity payments to immigrants? <laughs> but of course. Um, and they go on to say, neither immigrants nor anyone else is able to collect Social Security benefits without someone paying the Social Security payroll taxes into the system. The conditions under which Social, Social Security benefits are payable and to whom can be found in the pamphlets available on our website. And they give a link. The question confuses the SSI program with Social Security, and this happens a lot. So I totally get where they're coming from here. SSI is a federal welfare program and no contributions from immigrants or citizens or anyone else is required for eligibility. Remember, that's a welfare program. Certain conditions, under certain conditions, immigrants can qualify for SSI benefits. That's true. They have to have lived here a certain amount of time and blah, blah, blah. By the way, that's not illegal immigrants, that's legal in immigrants you know, who, right? Um, so just make sure that is clear. Now, I'm not going to go into whether or not certain groups in this country are trying to change that to get um, undocumented immigrants to be able to reap welfare benefits. Uh, I think you guys can all watch the news and figure out what's going on there. <laughs> but this is not what they're talking about. <laughs> Excuse me. Um. And I would say that, of course, immigrants lawfully present who have paid into the social security system, which is not the SSI system, would of course be able to get their insurance benefits just as they could if they paid for auto automobile insurance. They paid for it, they bought it. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, a little dry in here. And they do add that the SSI program, which is the, the welfare program, was an initiative of the Nixon administration um, that might surprise some of you um, and was signed into law by President Nixon on October 30th, 1972. Imagine that, SSI, um, the needs-based program for the poor elderly or the poor disabled was 
an initiative of President Nixon and was also signed into law by him. I didn't know that. <laughs> anyway, some of those interesting um, rumors and such. I have, I do, I always hear the one about, oh, they put it in the fund so that Congress could spend it. You know, and I, I don't know where that ever took wings from, but I knew that wasn't so. There are plenty of things to criticize about the program, I'm sure, but that might not be one of them. So can put your mind at ease there, guys. I will talk to you later. Have a good day.